your hands together and appreciate Jesus. Just wave your hands to him. I love you, Lord. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know whether it will need all of you, but I will let Apostle determine that. Are we ready tonight? <laughs> let me hear a very powerful yes. Let me appreciate Minister David Down. Wow. <laughs> You know, I will talk to Apostle, but definitely you will be here again. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Were you blessed? The presence of God is not about noise. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm not surprised anyway. I know where it's coming from. Yes. <laughs> um. Paul said, am I not an apostle? Am I not an apostle? First Corinthians chapter 9. Have I not seen the Lord? Many can claim to have seen the Lord, but only few men that I know that he shows in everything in them and around them. Apostle is not everything he preaches. First of all, you see it in his life. He is not only giving a message about God transforming men, making them to be conformed to the image of Christ, God lifting men, you first of all see the pattern in his life and in people around him. I said to myself one day, I've seen him preach abroad at home for daddy Jew, for different people. I have never, I'm yet to see Apostle say, man, once in seven years, for once, preaching casually somewhere. Or running out of points and just standing behind the pulpit and not once in seven years. Home, abroad, big meeting, small meeting, anywhere. The same. That can only be a product of an encounter. So when people tell you that they are met with the Lord, you know those who have truly met with him by the result that you see. Yes, no man can do these things except God be not only with him, in him. The Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. In this generation, there is a man sent. <laughs> not just to Nigerians, which God has been able to prove again and again through his ministry, that not just in Nigeria, yes. but all over the world, like they said concerning Paul, he said this Paul, not only in, a, uh, in Ephesus, but almost all through the entire Asia. Thank God for a voice raised. Thank God for somebody raised by God. The word of God will first of all clean you up. That means transform you. Then the word of God will move to second level of giving you conviction. I'll talk about that one day. And the final stage, the word of God will give you a message. You will not have a message without having a conviction. Or your message will be very weak. I see these dimensions. Not only do I see it in this man, when he communicates the gospel, the reality, that reality also becomes people's reality. What a privilege tonight. <laughs> Pastor Tokbe, please come up. You, sh you can sit there. Come and sit. Brother Bobber, please, you have a seat here. Are we ready to receive tonight? Person, no, ju just go this way. Don't, we, uh, I'm bringing somebody to go this way. Don't I wanted to do that before I call up the apostle. You, are, you wanted to go and take him. Are you a child? You are not, a, a, you are not an Israelite. The journey of 40 days. Becoming... Hallelujah. What, what a, <laughs> and all I said, every time either he comes here or he ministers anywhere, it's as fresh as if you are listening to me for the first time. Thank God we are witnesses here that over and over again, this. You know, when we used to. After doing a bit and then I would let Apostle call me on Sunday morning. I would do a bit on Saturday night. 
and wake up early to come to church on Sunday morning. He will preach in church before going to Abuja. Even then, he would have preached three in Abiyokuta when he, every time he showed up here Sunday morning, it would be a different dimension. That can only be a person sustained by Jesus Christ himself. That can only be somebody that Christ has been unveiled to. Yeah. So we are so privileged tonight. If we say from Abuja, we are right. If we say from Zaria, we are right. If we say from UK, you are right. <laughs> it's all over. So maybe we should just say that from heaven above, sent by Jesus. Let's appreciate tonight Apostle Joshua Selman Limak. Somebody give God praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Pastor Shola, thank you so much. And your dear wife, household of David, thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus. And let's celebrate David Dam. Incredible, incredible worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Please hold hands together. Let's pray in the spirit for a few minutes. And then we'll go to the word. Just pray in the spirit everywhere. Lift your voices. As we pray and bless the Lord, the Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. Take a minute or two to pray in the spirit, connecting from the internet those outside. Rante beleko sata fraski balato safrande gebeleke tosiata. Our hearts are open to receive, to access divine realities. Sapraska de beleke barato skafrande belekos. Prata barato sofras kebelende mekatosh. Krata gata prande gebeleto safrande gebelekos yata. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I want to specially appreciate, honor, and celebrate um, Pastor Shola and his dear wife, particularly for his consistency. Hallelujah. I've had the honor and the privilege, I think, in the last seven years to be in this church every year and to be part of this conference, which I do not take for granted. And it has only been from grace to grace from glory to glory this is a man truly deserving of honor can we honor him one more time thank you for your consistency and for the grace hallelujah and i'm sure that you have been blessed by all the sessions past god is doing great things in our life and even as we explore the word tonight i pray that your heart be opened God is raising mighty people. He's revealing himself across the nations. And anybody who decides to take God serious will have a reward of unusual dimensions of grace and glory. This is the truth. And I pray and believe that there are people tonight whose hearts are opened and are ready to receive. Hallelujah. Father, help us tonight by the spirit of the living God. More love. More power, more of you in my life. It's my prayer, Lord. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. More love. More power, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power. 
specific people in this place the Lord is saying the realm which which you are dealing with me will not allow you serve the nations you will need to rise higher there is a contention for greater power there is a contention for greater levels of grace many desire to serve God in higher and greater dimensions I want you to listen I'm speaking to you now and there are many people who wonder why it looks like there is a limit in the spirit as to how high they are able to rise and ascend and as to why they are unable to birth the purposes of God in a greater dimension. Every dimension of reality and possibility has a grace requirement. There is a level of unction and there is a level of grace that affords you the privilege to serve God's purposes to the degree that brings him satisfaction. Your assignment as a believer is to press with unbending focus. The Bible says this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. It says I press, I reach. There has to be a determination. Hallelujah. I know that you have enjoyed the sessions past, but the brief time we're going to be having, I'm just going to be opening us to something and challenging us. And while that is happening, I believe tonight, alongside the teachings you have heard, is a call, something to press from within you that there can be more that you can do for God and doing God to bring you a level of healthy dissatisfaction that nominal Christianity and a Christian experience with gaps in knowledge and the bankruptcy of grace will only leave you disappointed. He said, come up hither and I will show you. There are things you cannot see from the standpoint where 
grain you are standing you will need to ascend you will need to rise and that does not just depend on the power or the willingness of God it depends on your level of seriousness your dedication and your committal the truth is that the kind of spiritual investment that you put in in these days and in this season will determine the kind of grace that speaks to your life did the Bible not say he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal so everybody's a farmer you are sowing some to the flesh and some to the spirit and even those who are sowing in the spirit are in the similitude of the parable of the sower on good ground it brought three kinds of results some 30 fold some 60 fold and if you have refused to settle until they attain unto hundredfold and so i'm here to charge your heart tonight that this conference is supposed to be a wake-up call to challenge you that there's got to be more there's got to be more and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you hallelujah help us tonight spirit of the living god in jesus name we have prayed please be seated God bless you the revelation of Jesus hallelujah it's important for us to understand that the believer is mandated to know the Lord as much as time as much as your passion can allow there is no exhaustion as far as the press to know God is concerned the body of knowledge that is required to cause the believer to excel are finite. You may have heard me say that when it has to do with success, when it has to do with victory, when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos, there is an exact predefined body of spiritual knowledge that has been given the believer. And that when you access that body of knowledge like a spiritual curriculum, are we together? You are able to access light and grace that helps you to reign. But when it has to do with the knowledge of God, our pursuit and the knowledge of God is vast. Even eternity will not help us cover the entire span of knowing who God is. Hallelujah. So it's important we separate our press for the knowledge of the things that make for our victory in life and then the knowledge of god when it has to do with the knowledge of god it is an eternal pursuit that even in heaven we will still learn him hallelujah the layers to knowing god are infinite and so as we press to know him we only are able to touch layer after layer but then our passion remains like that of apostle paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry he said that i may know him not that i may have it not just that I may become, that I may know him. And then he breaks the him into various dimensions. Are we together? The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable. He now begins to speak that he wants to know something about the fellowship of his suffering, even made, being made conformable unto his death. In Ephesians chapter 1, when he was praying over the church in Ephesus, from verse 15 down to 19, he was praying that the church would have enlightenment, that they will have revelation in the knowledge of him, consequently understanding the hope of their calling. Are we together now? Verse 18, he says that you may know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19 says, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe. So there is a lot to know about God hallelujah but it's important for us to appreciate why we need to know God Daniel 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people that do know their God 
the people that do know their God. He never said the people that do know God Almighty. He never said the people that do know the one true God. He says everyone on earth derives his strength and confidence from his knowledge and fraternity with any spirit being that he has chosen to be loyal to. The people that do know their God there is a consequence number one they shall be strong capacity number two they shall do exploits exploits i after the order of the strength of the god that they know the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits john 11 john 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying now and here's what he said and this is eternal life that they may know thee the only or one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent jesus is speaking now and he's saying the nature of eternal life the life that the believer has now received that walking in the experience of eternal life is not a one-time activity that you receive that life by faith but the administration of eternal life depends on the progressive knowledge of god and of jesus christ and so two believers can be bona fide recipients of the life of god but the possibilities that they command will depend on the progressive knowledge of god this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent the third reason why it is important to explore the knowledge of God is found in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. 2 Peter 1 and verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, he says. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of things. It is not every information in the kingdom that administers grace. There is an exact body of knowledge that translates to grace. The knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, again, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse four says whereby are given to us these exceeding great and precious promises it says that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and i hope you know according to romans chapter 5 and verse 17 it says that he who did not spare if by the offense of one man death reigned by one he said much more they which receive the abundance of grace so the abundance of grace is a requirement for dominion hallelujah that among the many ingredients that translate to the dominion of the saints it's not just abundance of knowledge abundance of grace and here we see that grace depends on knowledge are we together so when we press to know god it is so that we are able to have capacity and to sustain the ability to do exploits number two the administration of eternal life to the believer is a personal affair in as much as you receive by faith are we together that walking in the experience of eternal life depends on your progressive knowledge of god and then number three that in the knowledge of god is our access to grace genuine grace in multiplied dimensions and you know by now that our possibilities in the kingdom depend not just on the love of god not just on the will of god but the kind and the level of grace that is at work in any believer hallelujah this is very important and so we press for the revelation of Jesus with this understanding. Um, there are over 4,000, now about 4,200 religions in the world that are registered and are approved by various governments. And every one of them, or almost all of them I wrote here, draw their strength and conviction from the fact that they have the knowledge and connection to some deity in the spirit are we together 
that most religions derive their strength and their confidence from the knowledge and their fraternity with some deity, some force somewhere. So it doesn't matter what the religion is called. Most religions, especially the major religions in the world, when you meet the practitioners of that religion, at the base of the practice of that religion is some kind of proposition that there is a possibility of accessing strength, power, and any kind of advantage from some deity. A clear example of this in scripture was the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. When the prophets of Baal came to Mount Carmel, you would notice that they came with absolute confidence. They called upon Baal and they said, Baal, hear us. It was a disappointment because hitherto, he seemed to have always answered them. So their confidence was from the fact that they knew that Baal would not fail them. Except that that day, it was a disappointment. When King Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, when he had a dream, he called all the astrologers and the wise men, those who had been trained to fraternize, receive an advantage from the realm of the spirit to interpret his dream. And he was surprised. They were surprised that in this time, they could not, their fraternity with the realm of the spirit did not provide any advantage. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 2, the king goes to bed and he has a dream, wakes up and forgets the dream. And then he calls all his wise men, sorcerers, astrologers and says, listen, I'm going to kill you except you tell me my dream and the interpretation. What a king. You will tell me my dream, you were not there, but you told me that you know some deity in the spirit and I expect a superhuman advantage from you. There is an implication to claiming you know God. Life will demand that you prove something that humans cannot do. Are we together? So the king, you would think the king is wicked to call such people. How do you go to bed and wake up, forget your dream, and then you call all the people and say, if you cannot tell me my dream and the interpretation. In other words, the king is saying, I know that if you are truly connected to deity, connected to the realm of the spirit, there are advantages that are beyond the economy of men, but that your your fraternity with the realm of the spirit can afford you that advantage and daniel said let the king not be hasty in this allow us some time daniel chapter 2 the bible says then the secret was revealed unto daniel then the secret and daniel woke up and came with confidence and said king sit down let me talk to you you were sleeping in a certain day and this is what you saw the king was amazed same thing happened to joseph the pharaoh had a dream nobody could interpret it but here was a man who claimed he had a covenant with god same thing happened with david standing before goliath goliath said am i a dog that you come to me israel is this your best and david said you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you in a name the name of the lord god whom you have defied and he demonstrated that he was not alone hallelujah there is an implication to saying you know God there is an implication to saying that you have a relationship with a divine being whoever you call him to be in this case we're talking about Jesus the son of the living God so of all the religions in the world you see everybody derives his confidence from somewhere usually outside of himself hallelujah so when you meet some herbalists, they will tell you, I will curse you. And they will smile, beating their chest with confidence. Why? Because they have been trained to derive strength. They have been trained to derive conviction and confidence from their fraternity. And the, the depth of their conviction, the deeper the conviction, you see, if you probe into them, they will tell you, I have seen a spirit myself. I have gone to the world of the dead myself. And I do not fear again. Most believers are not people of courage and power. Genuine Bible faith is, is lost in the life of many believers because we have not pressed to know God in truth. It is impossible to be without faith. It is impossible to be without conviction except and unless. And when you have encounters, 
there is something that happens to you did you know that moses did not have to pray and say increase my faith when he met the god of the bible he said i'm ready to go and see pharaoh and he stood before pharaoh he came once and again the same man who ran away from egypt now came with courage what if what he ran away from was about to repeat itself again when you meet the god of the bible you never remain the same hallelujah are we together and according to scripture just just for our knowledge there are four biblical ways to knowing god i'll just run through it number one the bible reveals that all believers can know god through the study of scripture the first way believers are taught to know god is by exploring scripture and that from a child the bible says thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we together he says ye err not knowing the scripture that this scripture testifies of me so the scripture testifies of jesus when Jesus was speaking to the two men on their way to Emmaus, the Bible says, and beginning from Moses down to himself, he expounded to them the things written concerning him. So the things that are written in scripture are concerning a person. When you study the Bible, you learn the character of God as revealed in scripture. Hallelujah. It is from scripture we are able to understand God's character for instance, the psalmist would tell us that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. We will never know that except we explore and find that from scripture. Number two, the second way that we know the Lord has revealed is through his names. The names of God represent his various dimensions as revealed to man and they are captured and trapped in his names. Every name of God as mentioned in the scripture and there are many of them. They reveal certain dimensions of his grace and power. Hallelujah. When you say Jaira, when you say Rafeka, when you say Jehovah, when you say Yahweh, all of these are the names of God as trapped in scripture. Even if you say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, it is the same God, but his modus operandi as these names reveal are different. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. This is very important. The third way we know God as revealed in the Bible is through the person Jesus Christ. And I'll dwell a bit there when I'm done with this, um, just running through how we know God. Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know in Hebrews uh, chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past, through the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he hath appointed to be heir of all things are we together so he spoke in time past using different formulas but that in the last days he has chosen to speak to men through his son it was god himself who spoke over jesus audibly and said this is my beloved son and in one of the encounters he said whom i am well pleased and he said hear ye him so jesus can be used as a template to knowing god and then finally experience we can know god through the lens of experience job 42 and verse 5 it was job who was speaking and said the things that i've heard through the hearing of the ear he says now i have heard of thee by the hearing of the air but now my eye seeth thee there is a dimension of reality beyond hearing you can doubt what you hear but you cannot doubt what you see hallelujah there are times you pick up a call and someone is speaking and you will need to ask who are you because the voice sounds like another person's but not when you are looking at the person so we know God from scripture, we know God through his names, we know God through Jesus, the revelation of Jesus, and we know God through experience. Now let me say this, while I was just making my notes, it just occurred to me to really add this to this conference, the three reasons why Jesus came to the earth. Most believers, you will be surprised, do not know why Jesus left heaven and came to the earth. Most believers will say he came to die for your sin. And that's not a lie. But that is an incomplete understanding as to why Jesus came. 
hallelujah there are three biblical reasons as to why jesus came let me give it to you number one the first reason why jesus came to this earth his first assignment was to be an accurate manifestation of the misunderstood god you need to understand this the first assignment of jesus in coming to the earth as flesh was to be a marking script to correct our idea about the God that was only known by a few prophets in types and shadows. Jesus came as a revelation and as a manifestation of a God that people did not know because in those days, men did not have the privilege of a personal encounter. There were just a few people and it was simply based on the assignment allotted to them. Are we together? So the nation of Israel, even though they were a covenant people, they would have to depend on their leaders part time to bring to them any information they feel they have gotten from God. And that means the limitation of the individual prophets and leaders was imparted to the whole nation. Whatever they told them God said, they had to believe it. Whatever they told them they saw, now we know from the Pauline epistle that we see in part and we prophesy in part. That means nobody, we have a right to edit everything the prophet saw from the lens of the person Jesus. There were many things that they credited to Jesus. I mean, they credited to God that we do not see captured in the life of Jesus. So Jesus came as perfect theology, an embodiment. Are we together now? An embodiment of God's idea. The Bible calls him the word incarnate. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The Bible says the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3 says, it says, all things were made by him and without him was not anything that was made are we together four says in him was life and that life was the light of men verse five now he says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together when you read down verse six seven eight the bible tells us that the word became flesh and it dwelt among men the word became flesh it was embodied trapped in a human body and we beheld his glory even as of the father full of grace and truth so we know that jesus christ came as the word incarnate so that the mistakes of moses the mistakes of isaiah the mistakes of elijah the mistakes of all these great men as far as their perception of god is concerned they did their best based on their limitations we know now that there are many factors that are responsible for knowing god and no single individual no single individual is able to capture god holistically especially that they were without the assistance of the holy spirit so jesus came as a correction of our understanding about god are we together number two jesus came to give us life the bible declares he came to make the life of god accessible to men and that happened by reconciling men to god jesus came to make available and accessible to men the life of god john 3 16 his discussion with nicodemus he says god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever so this privilege is for whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have the way everlasting life john 10 10 the thief cometh not jesus is speaking but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said i am come that ye may have life this is why i came that ye may have life his his manifesto was clear and unambiguous i am come not just to die the dying was a process i am come that ye may have life and that you have it in its entirety other versions will say to have it to its fullness more abundantly the third reason why jesus came is to serve as a model of god's expectation for man a model of god's expectation for man in his coming he let us know through his life as the pattern man what god expects of us 
and what God expects from us. John 14 and verse 12. It was Jesus who was speaking and he said, 14 and 12, John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do, and greater works than this. He had to create a benchmark and a reference through his life. We would be at a loss as to God's expectation about us and it would be unfair for God to expect something from us without giving us a model that represents his idea. So the first thing he said is, this is my son. I am well pleased. That means you are safe to understudy him and believe whatever he tells you is my expectation. So Jesus began to speak. My meat is to do the will of him that had sent me and finished it. And the Bible says, as we are, now as he is so are we in this life it was jesus after he resurrected he said as my father has sent me is that in your bible so send i you so we know how the father sent him how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power so if the father sends us we say where is the power and where is the holy ghost because jesus was not sent alone without the holy ghost and without power we are not sent properly so if you hear go in your spirit you verify by the presence of the holy ghost and the presence of power if it is not there you are not being sent like jesus jesus came as a model are we together to help us understand god's expectation so i bent I benchmark my faith work. I benchmark my success in life and ministry and destiny using the reference of the person Jesus. These are the three biblical reasons as to why Jesus came. Now watch this. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he tried to probe into the various confusion. When he walked upon the earth, he, he found out that there were many people who were at a loss as to who God was, including the scribes and the Pharisees. He was fair enough to them to visit their temples and he listened to them teach. It was very clear that they did not know God. Are we together? And then in Matthew chapter 16, when you read from verse 13, he now went ahead to ask the disciples. He said, when he came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He wanted to get their understanding, their perspective. And verse 14 now, the disciples said, some say you are John the Baptist. You can see now. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are one of these prophets. Verse 15. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And he was shocked that they themselves, even though they had the advantage of proximity, they really did not know who he was. So you can be around church. You can be around a man of God. You can be around conferences. You can be around a lot of spiritual things. Having messages in your laptop, Bibles with concordances. These are supposed to be to help you and provide a leverage. But that in itself does not translate into knowing God. I mean, what experience will be greater than walking with Jesus? To be mentored directly by Jesus. You would think these guys, if you meet Jesus for one day, some of us met him maybe in earth's time, maybe for a few minutes, and our lives would not recover. And here are men who woke up with him, they ate with him, he sent them, they returned, they found out he was still there, yet they were not changed. That means it takes more than proximity to be changed hallelujah that someone was so used to seeing jesus jesus became a business idea not just a savior not just a desire can you imagine that jesus appears to you now and you are wondering how do i use this revelation to make money that was judas for you <laughs> isn't it amazing that men can be familiar with jesus you would think because he is Jesus, people should never be tired of him. We worship and we roll and when the worship is ended, sometimes we feel sad. We feel it should go on and on. I'm introducing to you disciples who were with Jesus 24 hours. Some got tired and they started asking him sarcastic questions. When are you going to restore the nation of Israel? Listen, it's not just about you. There is a stake in this thing and we need to know where we stand. So Jesus was probing into the confusion as to who he felt they thought he was. 
and he was surprised to hear the various views doesn't that look like the church today when we say Jesus we all say Savior but if I'm to ask you who is Jesus to you you will be surprised for somebody Jesus is a formula for becoming wealthy another person Jesus is um, at least a deity that looks like my traditional practice is just that it's more superior and refined for someone else Jesus is one who has come with the proposition that heaven waits for me if I hand my life over to him for another person Jesus is my father's religion who forced me into it and I'm just here because I have to obey my father I hope I will see what I can do when I'm alone whether I will continue in that faith practice, many people are around Jesus, but with many, many definitions. And so I thought to reveal to you something very interesting. In the Gospels, theologically speaking, there are seven profound statements where Jesus himself gives definition and description about himself. In total, in the New Testament, we have about ten. Three of them in the book of Revelation. And I want to quickly just run that with you. Number one, Jesus said about himself, I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. He called himself by himself the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. In other words, it is impossible for you to live fully and to live effectively outside of your participation and your relationship with me i am the bread of life hallelujah number two very quickly he says i am the light of the world this is profound if another prophet said it we can doubt it but here is jesus speaking and saying i am remember the i am of exodus chapter 3 he's now speaking and he's saying i am the light of the world john 8 12 jesus himself said i am the light of the world hallelujah that everyone who follows me will not walk in darkness that means one definition of light is walking with jesus when you walk with jesus the bible says there is no possibility of stumbling into darkness i think it's the same john 9 and verse 2 john 9 or verse 5 john 9 and verse 5 jesus said for as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world i am the light of the world number three jesus describes himself as the door he says i am the door the authorized access to the kingdom john chapter 10 verse 7 and verse 9 i am the door this is what he says about himself do you know what that means a door is an authorized access into a house into a room so when jesus says i am the door i am the authorized way to learn god i am the authorized way to access the kingdom meaning there are other routes like you always hear me say if you come into my house by jumping into my fence you are in my house but you are not welcome you are called a thief not a visitor am i right on that if you want to come into my house to be received you have to come in through the door jesus says i am that door number four jesus called himself the good shepherd the good shepherd john 10 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep he says i am the good shepherd this reminds me immediately of psalm 23 and verse 1 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want number five jesus called himself the resurrection and the life the resurrection and the life john 11 25 the resurrection and the life this was at the tomb of lazarus he was speaking to Mary, speaking to Martha, and he called himself. He said Lazarus could come back, and they say, yes, we know in, you know, the day when Jesus, you know, when God would come, all the saints, they were told about the coming judgment and the resurrection of the dead, some to eternal life, some to eternal damnation, and she said, we know. But Jesus said, here and now, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. I am the resurrection, and I am the life in number six jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life i like this i am the way and the truth and the life john 14 and verse 6 i am the way 
I can spend all night teaching on this. The way, the truth, the life. What he was saying is not, I am the way you can choose this or I am the truth. He was connecting something. It's a spiritual formula. I am the way that leads you to truth and then finally administers life. That means if you want life, the first point of your journey is to follow the way. Then you come to reality, the truth, and finally you will find life. I am the way and the truth and the life. It says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Finally, number seven, Jesus called himself the true vine. John 15 verse 1 and verse 5. I am the true vine, he says, and my father is the husbandman. Verse 5 now, he says, every branch in me that I am the vine, yeah, the branches, he that abided in me, I and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit. So when you want to be fruitful in your life, you have to understand him as the true vine that it is only based on your connection to jesus christ that you are able to draw strength and excel reminds me of ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 when you look at the amplified rendition of ephesians 6 and verse 10 it says finally brethren be strong in the lord amplified version says draw your strength from your union with him it says be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might so you are empowered based on the consciousness of your union with him that i can fail alone but me and god cannot fail together hallelujah seven profound statements that jesus made now if you care to go to the book of revelations revelation chapter 1 from verse 8 he made a profound statement to the same john i am alpha omega the beginning and the end saith the lord this is profound i am he which is which was and which is to come so it was not just the four and twenty elders who said this jesus said this about himself in fact he's speaking now as the resurrected king not just the one who walked upon the earth and he called himself alpha omega the beginning the ending the one who is who was and who is to come hallelujah in revelations 1 and verse 17 he called himself the first and the last i am the first and the last i am the first and the last i began all things and when all is said and done there may not be banks again when all is said and done there may not be apps and it again but jesus still remains it is profitable to hold on to the one who remains when all is said and done have you not seen beautiful buildings that were once dedicated and then you also watch the day they are also destroyed have you not watched beautiful phones you buy a gadget and it's as if it will not spoil and one day you become so unemotional you throw it away have you not seen clothes you buy clothes and you buy it and almost don't want to wear it because of the beauty but then it fades when he says i am the first and the last it means be wise enough to know that when everything everything that comes to your life is transient is transitory i am the only one who will remain ministry will come and go that's what my dear david dam sang in his song there are kings there are kingdoms there are names there are titles there are all kinds of things but they will fade away 200 years ago nobody on earth today was on earth if christ tarries 200 years no matter how old you want to live you want to live long now but when you get old and you are sure you have jesus you want to live in a hurry are we together it is dangerous to live among people who don't love jesus ask lot lot loved the lord but he was in a place surrounded by people who were increasing in their decadence and he desired the time of exodus when the angel came in a hurry he was on his way out of the same sodom that he once came ladies and gentlemen hear me when he calls himself the first and the last what he's saying is he's your greatest asset many people made him the first but right now he most likely may not be the last because we have replaced him with many things that we perceive to be of greater value maybe a job 
maybe some treasure maybe some investment maybe a name maybe accomplishments but he calls himself the first and the last in fact for many of us he was never truly first many other things were first and then he came into our lives it is your assignment to keep ascending him in your heart till he now becomes the first he can be in your life as the 21st he can be in your life as the 15th most important thing your job being number one or ministry being number one or fame being number one when he comes to your life he wants to ascend that position until he becomes first and that when all is said and done if everything is emptied out of your life he still remains the last the friend that stick it closer than a brother is someone learning this is Jesus for you finally in Revelations 1 18 he calls himself I am he that liveth I like this I am he that liveth and was dead he never said I am dead this God once died but he's no longer in the grave i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive how long you want to trust somebody who does not die i am alive forevermore i have read about kings i have read um, I, I like to read about history to know about kingdoms and nations and i've read about cruel kings kings who in their lifetime they made the world a terrible place to live in and they acted as if they would never die yet they died their graves today are testaments that they are not god there were many kings who got up with boastful statements saying that they were god they made men to worship them but once upon a time in history they died he says i am he that was dead now i'm alive and i live forevermore now watch this i want to take one out of the many things that jesus said he was and he is and that's what i want to use to pray over us tonight so i want you to be sensitive jesus called himself in john 14 6 the way the truth and the life among the many revelations of Jesus that we can afford to explore I want in a few minutes to just touch on this because this concerns what God wants to do in someone's life this night in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus called himself the way please look up Proverbs 14 and verse 12 the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man we live in a society where there are all kinds of ideas and templates there are all kinds of inventions for living when you go to sociologists they will give you their idea about life when you go to religious people they would design a template when you meet technologists when you meet atheists when you meet people who are given to to technological advancement everybody seems to have a model a formula for living and here's what the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it says the end thereof are the ways of death hallelujah in jeremiah 6 16 jeremiah 6 16 it says stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old path wherein is a good way and walk therein there is a way you can choose to do ministry there is a way you can choose to do business there is a way you can choose to raise children but the bible says listen to me i am the way in other words no matter how you want to route your life as far as representing the purposes of god is concerned your journey must begin with jesus not just as savior but the way the way to do ministry is to route it through Jesus. The way to do business is to route it through Jesus. There are many ways to get power with the various connecting consequences. But the way to get it right is Jesus. There is a way to raise children with the various consequences connected. But the way to get it right is Jesus. Jesus says, I am, not I have. I am the way. Number two, he says, I am the truth this is very important among the many names that satan is called is a liar and the father of all them that lie a lie is not just a statement that is untrue a lie is any statement that does not have god's endorsement on it is a lie it doesn't matter how sociologically right it doesn't matter how intense 
intelligent it sounds if it does not have the statement of God the hand of God upon it that means if there is some growth in your body I, with respect to what God says that is called a lie did you hear what I'm saying now that everything that looks like darkness around your life when you bring it from the lens of Jesus the truth and he does not just say the truth he reveals the truth because truth is light and light can shine in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not those who have met Jesus the truth have sustained the intelligence to quench the voice of everything that looks like a lie in their life if you do not know Jesus the truth you will have the dominion of lies in your body in your finances in your ministry I repeat a lie is not just what you don't agree with no a lie is any statement that is not written in scripture any statement that it was not from God and not of God when it does not secure God's endorsement it is called a lie call me a failure and you lied not just because i don't like the statement i search my scripture and i never find god calling me that tell me i'm a victim of my background that may be true sociologically speaking but when i open this bible you become a liar immediately ah. by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me i wonder how many lies you heard when you woke up this morning i wonder how many dreams you had that i lie I wonder how many conversations how many reports you have been holding you have been piling up lies in your life I bring you Jesus the truth Jesus the truth the truth about your health the truth about ministry who told you you cannot become successful because you are doing ministry in Lagos hear the report of Jesus the truth Kalina Shobranda Gabareko Siata Gideon heard a lie he believed that lie and a warrior was hiding because he was dwelling in a lie an angel appears to him and says hear the truth you are not a weak man although you came from the least of the tribes you are a mighty man of valor let me call upon someone by the spirit of the living god that the weakness the lies of the devil that has pressed you down maybe because of your past maybe because something happened around your life i say it again the truth is beyond an unacceptable statement any reality that has not secured the endorsement of God is called a lie last I checked my Bible there was an interesting statement that adds up to what I'm saying let God be true ah is that in your Bible let God be true and your medical report a liar let God be true and your financial statement a liar let God be true and all the negative dreams by the devil that because your father died at a young age most likely you will also die at a young age Jesus the truth by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me let me tell you what the truth says about you he calls you the head and not the tail let me tell you what the truth says about you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side but none shall hurt you listen this is not pentecostal gibberish it has not happened simply because you don't believe it when it is to you just a religious statement you will never see it work for you when i read my bible the truth told me that I can be exalted above all the nations of the earth and these blessings can come upon me and overtake me I believed it in your name I come alive to declare your victory 
the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me the last time i read my bible it says love never fails that means anything that is failing add love to it it stops failing immediately and that love is not an affection it's a person i can fail alone no doubt but me and jesus cannot fail we are we are a twin combo his presence negates that i fail so he says rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall let me speak to some business person here affected by covid affected by all kinds of things and the devil has lied to you this conference was designed to reveal jesus as the truth hear me nations of the world jesus still remains the truth the truth about god's idea on you do you believe this jesus the way among the many methods many 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 of them trial and error in their pride and confidence they propose to show you the path to glory the path to prosperity the path to greater enlightenment but here jesus comes with audacity and says i am the way so when you come forward to make it right with jesus is beyond just becoming a christian you are honoring the proposal offered by the way there are many ways he says that seem it right to a man in fact paul says there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification then he says i am the truth isn't it amazing how noisy lies are switch on your tv and you hear things that god did not say walk around and you hear things that god did not say because satan is the master of the sense realm he will amplify the voice of pain amplify the voice of unemployment amplify the voice of the misunderstanding you have with your husband and your children and create a narrative out of it and sell it to you when the lie remains for a long time it can sound like the truth ask the woman who had been bent over for 18 years she was living in a lie she went to church on sunday and she heard all kinds of lies hear what the truth said when he came he looked at her and said woman thou art loose from your infirmity and when they questioned him he said ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan had bound lo this 18 years only god knows what other narrative she had heard there was a woman with the issue of blood when jesus was on his way to heal jarius's daughter when jarius's daughter was born that was the day her issue of blood started they were all 12 years and that woman was in pain and jesus was going to heal jarius's daughter and he said no that girl was born when my problem started and they told me one day go better now i've known that statement is a lie jesus you are passing i know that it's not time that changes things It's when i engage my faith if i may but touch the hem of your garment there was a man at the pool in john chapter 5 called bethesda please be sensitive i want to pray for you tonight john 5 he had been there for 38 years the longest time we know from scripture where a man lived with tragedy the bible does not tell us how long job lived with his tragedy but in recorded time the bible will usually tell us how long pain lasted 12 years 18 years and here was a man 38 years imagine when he was three years old in that condition i'm sure he felt by five years i should be done five years became ten years because nothing changes until jesus comes and based on what they told him and the bible also recorded it that it is once a year that an angel would come and stare the water and the tragedy of that man he explained it to jesus why are you in this condition and he said i have no man there is no advantage of favor from men that when the water is stirred before i get there the one who has men will step in before me and jesus said i have come to you now that means jumping into the water was not the only way 
to be healed. That was the only way she knew. The same way, thank God for medicine and medication. I'm not against it. But that is not the only way to walk in health. There is still another route. A more superior route, in fact. It's called Jesus the truth. Hallelujah. It is true that based on the world system, you save, you invest, you can get, gradually build a house or buy a house. That is true. But when God comes, he can tell you, I can bring you into prepared blessings. And listen, this is not just some Pentecostal gibberish to encourage lust. It's the truth. There is a system of advantage that believers have in their dealings with God. We are not all left to ourselves. We are encouraged to be diligent. We are encouraged to walk the laws that have been put in place. But to walk with an awareness that under a certain conditions, by this time tomorrow, a man's life can change. My question for you tonight is how many lies have you believed in? How many lies have you built your spiritual life around? How many lies have you built your ministry around? That you must be responsible for the payment of every block that builds your church. You will be ready for headache. There are various ways. Even a fish by God's instruction can bring coin. Fishes don't eat coin. But not when God is speaking. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. How do you look at a man who is sitting on a wheelchair, whose legs have been bent over, and from a medical standpoint, respectfully speaking, that man is told there is no possibility again your bones or you are stage four stage three cancer this is clear you are going to die that is relative truth based on the practice and the experience of the one who communicated it but not when jesus comes even for the man who dies he can stand in front of the tomb and say lazarus come forth only the truth can do that can i tell you and when you understand the revelation of jesus the truth you are also empowered to be an extension of that dimension so you go to everywhere that has been plagued by the lie of the devil that includes your family that nobody can rise from this family that the men will become women and women will become men that all kinds of yokes will keep people bound and you will tell them this lie has existed for a century but i present to you jesus the truth tonight whose report will you believe because there are many kinds of reports he said who had believed our report and to whom had the arm of the lord been made manifest let me give you the last i promise that we're praying i am the way i am the truth and the most audacious statement jesus ever made as far as describing his person is concerned is i am the life i am the life do you know what that means i researched checking every material i can find for the definition of life i thought life was very easy to define till i started looking for the definition you try to define life and you see how hard it is what will be your definition of life because our very understanding of life is relative our understanding of life is with respect to our existence in this frame so when i ask you what is the definition of life you will tell me the absence of death you are right but you are wrong because even in death there is life are we together please pay attention so when jesus makes such an audacious and complicated statement i am the life the life many kinds of life but i am the life not just the way not just the truth because the first thing man had from the devil in the garden of eden was a lie and when god appeared to him in genesis chapter 3 he says adam where art thou he said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked he said who told you someone has told you something i did not say and you believed it and you become what you believe 
Are we together? Now he says, I am the life. You want to understand the meaning of that statement? You will have to go back to John chapter 10 and verse 10. He says, the thief cometh not. That means I am the life. My ministry is necessitated because of the presence of someone called the thief. The thief cometh not. You thought that Jesus would just make that statement and say, I am the life. He didn't just stop there. He said, let me tell you something so you appreciate the value of me being the life. There is someone called the thief. And that he's unbending in his ministry, his threefold ministry, to steal, to kill, to destroy. In other words, the remedy for Satan's havoc of stealing satan's havoc of killing satan's havoc of destruction is embracing jesus the life anything that can stop killing anything that can stop stealing anything that can stop destruction in god's economy is called life did you hear me anything that can stop killing and i hope you know the last enemy to be destroyed is death so when Jesus says, I am life, it means I am he who has dominion over that which all men fear, even death. Every man is courageous, but not until you tell them you are snuffing the life out of them. Great men become afraid like children. Even kings like Hezekiah would have to cry because they do not want to die. And yet Jesus says, I am the life. I am the remedy to this ministry of the thief that comes to steal comes to kill that means anywhere you see stealing the answer to it is life anywhere you see stealing the answer to it is life the life of god therefore is more than the ability to breathe oxygen in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide the life of god is a holistic capture of everything that immunes the believer from the ministry of stealing killing and destruction so to anyone who is sick it is beyond the healing anointing you will call it the healing anointing but god calls it life to anyone who has lost money and gone down you will call it restoration but jesus calls it life to he who is already dying being plagued by various shades of death that you call sicknesses and infirmity the answer to that condition is life i am the way i am the truth but it does not stop there i am life when you believe in jesus as the life watch this you can look at that cancer because i hope you know everything that grows grows because it has life that means when a growth that was no longer in, was not in your body from birth starts growing there is another kind of life it is feeding on if not it will not grow you learn from basic biology that all living things grow so if you call a cell unicellular and it begins to multiply and bulge out growing unusually don't tell me that is death there is another demonic kind of life that's why jesus did not say i am life he said i am the life and that he can come in and cut away everything that looks like death everything that looks like sickness everything that looks like sorrow ladies and gentlemen hear me the greatest administration of life is translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son but he does not stop there he says to receive life and then to receive it more abundantly there are two dimensions to receiving life you can receive jesus and live a defeated life live a life of sickness and failure a life that is bankrupt of meaning and grace honor victory and purpose that is life you just received but not abundant life his desire expectation prayer for all of us I always wondered what he's doing as the intercessor at the right hand of the father I believe he's praying this is eternal life he says that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent 
of all the crowds of people in this auditorium the many outside and the many following many of you require one or more or all three of these revelations of jesus tonight there are many people who have been lost in their own ways and their own lives and their own living you have explored other methods and other channels of routing success of routing victory of being free from demons being free from the vicissitudes of life jesus presents to you a template tonight he calls himself the way and there are many people that includes believers you have listened to all kinds of wrong reports you grew up hearing a lie for many of us we were trained using the template of a lie and jesus comes to you now like the woman who had been bound for 18 years and he says i am the truth i am the truth that even if you are abraham without a child for 25 years he still tells you you will be a father of nations and because he has said it he will do it according to genesis 21 and verse 1 and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken hallelujah and then for many of you here particularly those who the devil is trying to plague with all kinds of sicknesses and infirmity jesus himself called satan the thief not a thief there were many other kinds of thieves like the ones that hung by his left and right on the cross they were thieves but not the thief they were all sponsored by the thief the same one called the thief he called him the liar and the father of all them that lie i am life i want to take a minute or two and just speak to your heart we'll still have some time the brief session we'll have tomorrow but i just thought that you have tabernacled in this place listening to speaker after speaker some of you have endured all kinds of pain some of you are in the midst of negative life-threatening reports right now particularly in your body can i tell you anything you tolerate is permitted to grow when you begin to feel that pain and you leave it this was the mistake of the early church in Acts chapter 12, the Bible tells us that it pleased the Herod to vex certain of the Jews. And when he held Peter, he held uh, James, he beheaded James, the church kept quiet. And the Bible says, verse, it proceeded further. The devil is permitted to proceed further when you keep quiet. He touched your child, you say, no problem, it's just a child. After all, I have five children. It's only one that is becoming useless. He proceeds further. He brings a headache and you smile over it and say, no, no problem. I'm sure it's just a normal thing. He proceeds further until they now tell you there is some growth there. The Bible says resist the devil. Resist the thief. Resist the liar. And it leaves you with an assurance that he will flee. The same one who is life is the light. He says that life became the light of man. And John 1 5 says the light shineth in the darkness. Anything called darkness. He says that which makes manifest is light. Hallelujah. And so I want to pray for you. You have tabernacled in this place. Some of you have come with age-long captivity. There are some of you in ministry and it looks like the glory of God cannot seem to be revealed in your life. That all that is around your life is shame and reproach. And then with many being sick. I have been sick before. I know what it means to be a victim of sickness. It is a terrible thing. And if you keep quiet and allow it, don't tell me because you are 50 years is a normal condition with old people. How about Abraham? How about Joshua? How about Caleb? That in old age, their physical strength was not abated. No. We transit when our assignments are over. Not when our bodies deteriorated because of sickness. Listen. I've studied the healing ministry and I'm still doing that till today. And one of the revelations that the Lord gave me before we begin to pray. Is that every believer. Every body based on the law of God is given the privilege of one body per lifetime you do not have an advantage for your spirit to be hosted in two bodies within one lifetime in fact the very definition of lifetime is from the time you are born till the time you transit am i right on that and 
God designed the coexistence of the spirit of a man in his body such that there is a requisite health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body are we together and when your body deteriorates beyond a certain threshold whether your time is up or not your spirit will have to exit it you call it death whether it's timely or untimely is another discussion are we together so every time sickness comes to your body is a measure of death making a proposal to you the moment you permit it you give it ground whether you call it hepatitis whether you call it some issue of blood the life of the flesh is in the blood the woman with the issue of blood was literally like a walking corpse 12 years of non-stop hemorrhage what wickedness only satan can do that there are things when you see is a signature you know satan has visited this family hallelujah will it be fair enough to reveal jesus and leave the sick to go back sick does that look like a complete revelation of jesus no when he showed up the first proof of his messiahship was to see a man with a withered hand and he said stretch your hand this is why i came acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter was speaking in the house of cornelius to the first fruit of the gentiles who would now be saved and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good my goodness doing good requires power healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him apostle i'm not exactly sick but my genotype is ss can you insist tonight that the truth will rewrite what he has said in your body or will you say no problem i will be managing it now i'm not being sarcastic my confidence is based on the revelation of jesus i know he has power to heal are we together how about my dead organ apostle jesus called himself the resurrection and the life am i right on that for every need in your life one of the 10 propositions of jesus can answer to it you are confused he calls himself the way you are outside of the experience of the kingdom he calls himself the door you think it is too late he calls himself even now the resurrection and the life he is alpha omega you don't understand where your life is going to trust the omega the trouble in your life is not omega it will give way one day the bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen that the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah you're in ministry here you are trusting god for a new dimension of grace jesus himself the one who anoints the bible tells us god can anoint men how god anointed jesus how god anointed joshua selman how god anointed pastor shola how god anointed household of david how god will be anointing you tonight with grace beyond your imagination i'm not going to take too much of your time just lend me about five minutes and give me the honor of speaking let us drive lies let us drive darkness let us drive confusion from your life in one minute i'd like you to begin to pray aggressively from your heart that everything god did not say must give way in my life jesus is being revealed in the midst of his people jesus is being glorified in the midst of his people go ahead and pray you're a man of god pray you have come here with all kinds of oppression from your family pray tonight can be your night for liberty jesus said i am come that ye may have life go ahead and pray same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me are you praying your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me hey, same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me 
your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me one more time same power same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me oh your love your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me pray this captivity must come to an end Jesus is called light darkness what are you doing in my life Jesus is called the way confusion destiny confusion what are you still doing in my life Jesus is called the door why am I still left outside of destiny? Alpha, Omega, the vine, the source of my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, very quickly, whether for you or for your loved ones, I want you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. I want to pray for you right now. Lay your hands anywhere in your body you are trusting God for a miracle. And I want your eyes to be on Jesus. Take away your eyes from any sickness. Take away your eyes from any limitation. Apostle, we are trusting God for a child. Agree now. The life is coming. Apostle, there is some sickness in my body some fibroid some cancer lay your hands there if it's a part of your body you cannot touch please make contact with your chest just touch your chest migraine headache you are standing for a loved one perhaps you are watching from across the nations of the earth you are watching by way of television or internet the power of god is coming to you your home your office right now I'm bringing life because he gave us life. Just place your hand there and I pray for you. By your spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. To declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrected king is resurrecting you the resurrected king is resurrecting you the resurrected king is resurrecting you Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I have brought Jesus the way, Jesus the truth, Jesus the life. You declared and you made this proposition in Scripture that you are the life that translates to light, that light that shines in the darkness and that the darkness cannot comprehend it standing here tonight oh lord are people who have been plagued by the lies of the devil named as various sicknesses diseases and infirmities that have plagued their lives plagued their organs and i have brought you as jesus the life therefore in the name of jesus the son of the living god i decree and declare that every spirit that is back of any infirmity in whatever form or fashion it has appeared i declare that it leaves now shout a louder amen that it leaves now in the name of jesus christ and i stretch my hands from this altar standing in faith with all the graces here represented and i decree and declare in the name of jesus such a strong healing anointing is falling upon you now i decree and declare be healed in jesus name be healed in jesus name 
every blood condition here by the power that raised Christ from the dead I bring you life and healing now migraine headaches be healed now blood conditions be healed now ulcers of all sorts be healed now anyone with the issue of blood be healed now all kinds of growths fibroids any kind of growth in your body we flush it out now gastrointestinal problems in the name of Jesus be healed now reproductory problems be healed now respiratory problems be healed now anyone here who is SS perhaps AS we declare your genotype changed now I want you to believe it eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now any bone condition you are unable to walk or walk properly or walk freely let life come into your bones now in the name of Jesus if there is anybody or any family here appointed unto death in the name that is above all names I decree and declare death passes over your family death passes over your children passes over your loved ones in the name of Jesus and every negative circle represented in your family represented in your life because Jesus is being revealed here everything that represents death darkness lies and the ministry of the thief we command it to give way now 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 hallelujah listen when they gave the life two loaf five loaf and two fish it multiplied supernaturally whatever you have in your hand that has refused to grow in the name of Jesus at the revelation of Jesus the life we command let life get into it now because growth is a characteristic of living things therefore ministries that are not growing businesses that are not growing families that are not growing that is because there is the absence of life I declare let life surge into your family surge into your system surge into your finances in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah every long-standing issue issues that have been there for a long time like the woman with the issue of blood like the man at Bethesda for 38 years no matter how long it has lasted in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we decree and declare that his reign and hold over you comes to an end now as a token of this revelation of Jesus as the way the truth and the life I am praying unto my God that between now and tomorrow morning that something your eyes have not seen that something you probably would not have believed I don't know what God you serve but I call on my God may he surprise you in this place may my God surprise you for some of you your testimony will get to your house before you and wait for you there in the name of Jesus that you will only step into things that will give you tears of joy tonight and I say this to you by the Spirit of the Living God in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hear me the greatest administration of life is not healing everyone who was healed later died everyone who received restoration prosperity and lifting of all sorts later died the bible says awake you that sleepeth and christ will give you life 
you heard pastor isaac and he shared so powerfully in the previous session there are people here right now who are saying apostle in this gathering mine is not just freedom from infirmity mine is freedom from all kinds of things i am an embodiment of darkness from sin addictions all kinds of things and i'm praying and crying that god will visit me and show me salvation i know that our time is well spent but give me an opportunity to make one last altar call for the sake of one person in this place who is saying i need jesus the zenith of the revelation of jesus is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son i'm going to count one to five and my call is for two sets of people and i want us to please honor this invite before we leave church tonight you are in this place and you are saying apostle there's no point playing games i do not want to be ashamed i need jesus as a matter of life and death you can get a healing and a miracle and yet not be in relationship with jesus i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain as i count one to five if you are coming run to jesus one celebrate them as they come celebrate them as they come two by the time i count five we are celebrating jesus leave your seat and come if the spirit of god is telling you you need an encounter with jesus by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king are you coming to jesus resurrecting me by your spirit i'm arise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrected your name in your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrected me. Four. Please rush and come. There's still room at the cross for you. The Lord can give you a new beginning right now. You can genuinely make it right with Jesus. Not as some kind of church games. You can be free. And Jesus can give you a new beginning I'm tired of my life and I need to make it right with Jesus he said as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away let me tell you there is a grace that is sweeping the nations of the earth there is a harvest that we must bring before he returns and any platform that God gives is an opportunity to bring many to righteousness according to Daniel 12 and verse 3 he says they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness even as the stars forever and ever come ladies and gentlemen look at me some of you are standing here to make a first time decision some of you are crying there's nothing to be ashamed of this is what you get in the house of god when jesus is revealed love is revealed when jesus is revealed mercy is revealed when jesus is revealed righteousness is revealed when jesus is revealed he gives you another opportunity there were two men who were hanging on the cross both of them were attested to be thieves one found redemption by acknowledging his limitation the other one in pride lost an opportunity to make it right even at the point of death I salute you for coming to Jesus rebels don't come to Jesus they run away from him the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away I want to lead you to make this prayer of faith and please I beseech you by the message of God that you make it from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem Jesus is here this is a handover ceremony when you come to Jesus is beyond handing over your life you are receiving of his life and the Bible says he that does not have his spirit is none of his can I request that you wave your you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and please say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say here at this conference 2023 say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word I believe that you are Jesus, 
the way the truth and the life i come to you just as i am i ask you to save me to wash me with your precious blood i believe tonight that you are savior you are lord and you are king and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i receive the life of god into my spirit i declare that i am saved i am a child of god from this day i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted as i pray for you father you declared based on the authority of scripture that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away i declare in the name of jesus that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life by the authority of christ and of scripture we call you right now the righteousness of god in christ jesus and we empower you by the spirit to go and live a victorious christian life every addiction and everything that is antichrist and not of god the spirits that are behind it i declare be delivered from them now in the name of jesus christ every wrong association that keeps you bound i declare you are severed from such association receive the grace to live a victorious christian life in jesus matchless name we pray okay now here's what i want you to do for me I see counselors waving their placard. I know that there are a number of you. Let me please encourage you to move to my left now. That will be your right. And you'll be led by a few counselors. They will have a word with you very briefly. And then you'll return to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now one last announcement. We have a session tomorrow. I'm still here by the grace of God. And I want to take the time to do an impartation tomorrow hallelujah an impartation by the spirit of the living god will empower you and upgrade you in the spirit to access the requisite graces for the times and the days that are ahead and i want you to avail yourself invite everyone make the sacrifice to be here especially for some of us who are ministers of the gospel and those who know that there is a prophetic mandate upon our lives especially for the nations do avail yourself so that you can access this grace when he sends a word to jacob it is to be lightened upon israel may the lord bless you and increase you in jesus name